All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. It is Friday of March 11th here in the sports barn, and it's Eric Arnold, and we're celebrating here in the wee hours of this Friday morning. It's, it's a deal. The Players Association and the owners have made a deal. Oh my God, can you believe it? We're actually going to have a normal baseball season for the first time in four years. It, 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 the last time we had a normal season was 19, of course. Uh, we're going to have full stands, no masks, as far as I can tell. Uh, we're going to have nine inning games, no seven inning games. We're not going to put guys on second base to start extra innings. It's going to be, you know, like the good old days of 2019. Amazing! I honestly, I thought we had had a deal half a dozen times. And every time something happened to cause the deal to go fluttering away, I was just certain it's like, yep, yeah, that's it then. You know, we're not, uh, this will drag on forever. And, and somehow they made a deal. So, hey, you know, I, I, I resisted the urge to just bury these guys, you know, call them every name in the book. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Um, you know, let's not give them too much credit, you know, that they were able to somehow managed to figure out how to split this enormous pie uh, created by a $50 ticket uh, per ticket costs, $10 beers, $6 hot dogs, $40 to park. Uh, somehow they managed to figure out how to split that enormous pie, which to them, I guess, is just that big, but they did it. Somehow they did it. And you know what happened? They did it exactly the way I said it needed to be done. So let me let me really give it to the players here. You guys are the heroes. You absolutely are the heroes players because you're the ones that drag it across the finish line. Um, I said the rank and file has got to break with their executive committee, who was giving them bad leadership. I said that. They're being led poorly. There's no reason this shouldn't be a deal right now. Uh, you know, if you want to give the executive committee credit for wringing out a few extra dollars out of the owners, hooray for them. But what I've just found incredibly striking was the owners unanimously agreed to the deal. So the players... There's 38 votes uh, as far as the players go. 38 votes. Each team has a vote. And then the executive committee. There's eight guys, eight players on the executive committee. They all have votes. 30 plus 8, 38 votes. you got to have 20 to carry the motion, a simple majority. The executive committee voted 8 to nothing to reject to reject the deal, to scuttle the 162-game season, to go on and negotiating and negotiating and negotiating, trying to wring out just a few more dollars out of the owners and just beat the shit out of the fans just for a few more days, weeks, whatever. The executive committee voted eight to nothing to reject the deal. But the teams, the player reps from the representing the 30 teams voted 26 to 4 to accept the deal. So I don't know what that says about you guys, you executive committee guys. Uh, I heard it said, and I believe it 100%, that the executive committee was heavily influenced by Scott Boris. Um, there's a villain if there ever was one. Uh, uh, I know when I wake up in the morning, I say to myself, as a baseball fan, thank God for Scott Boris. He really has my best interests at heart. 
So undoubtedly, he's feeding these guys information, getting in their ear about how it's not good enough and we can do better. And yeah, uh, but the guys on the uh, rank and file, they want to play ball. We all want to play ball. Let's play ball. Uh, these guys, I'm going to see. I have a list here. I just want. You know, we're, let's not just call them the executive committee. Let's name and shame these people. Max Scherzer. You, know, you don't make enough money, Max Scherzer. Garrett Cole, same deal. Francisco Lindor. Have you found the rat yet that was in the uh, locker room where the fight occurred and you lied about it? Francisco Lindor, have you found the mouse yet that you guys were chasing down the hallway last season? Who do you have the fight with? The second baseman, his name escapes me. James Paxton, uh, Andrew Miller. Is this guy even still in the league? I, my notes say free agent. Marcus Simeon. Zach Britton, he's going to miss the entire year. His, I think he's thrown like six innings in the last five years and he's made a million dollars per pitch. And Jason Castro of the Astros. These are the eight that wanted us not to have a full season. Shame on you. But the rest, oh, then uh, I think I misspoke. I said uh, uh, it was 26 to 4, the players, the teams themselves uh, voted to accept the deal. So you got eight votes against that. It's 26 to four that the teams voted for the deal. Now, who were the four scumbags that voted against it? Mets, Yankees, Cardinals, Astros. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, other than the Cardinals, those are three teams I hate anyway. Yeah, the Yankees, the uh, frankly, I, everyone I know hates these teams. Well, except uh, 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 subscriber F likes the Mets, but then he fell uh, fell out of a tree and hit his head as a child. So, you know, he can be excused. But otherwise, they're all hateable teams. So, yeah, uh, uh, it doesn't surprise me that the villains of the game are still the villains of the game. But it doesn't matter because they got outvoted. So now they have to play. They have to play. We're going to get a full season. I'm excited. I, uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Pittsburgh Louie, we're going to get him back involved. Uh, we won last year. We were 26 units to the good over the season. We're hoping to do similar numbers, if not better, this year, coupled with the plus numbers Louie put up. You know, I'm thinking we could do some business here in the sports barn over this summer. This could be a real hot channel as far as baseball goes. So we're kind of enthused all of a sudden. I'd given it up for dead. I honestly thought we were going to get some bastardized season that'd be damn near impossible to handicap, just like 2020 was. Uh, but uh, uh, the better natures, the angels, I can't remember that Lincoln quote. It's uh, at the end of the Gettysburg, you know, is it? No, it was at the end of his inaugural address, and I can't remember what the hell he said. But anyway, it happened. They did it. It's great. Good stuff. Um, all right, let's talk a little NCAA since baseball. Oh, well, a, little, one more, a couple more baseball thoughts. Um, now, all these rule changes you've been hearing about, all these crazy things, apparently that all takes place next year. The only thing that's changed is the National League loses the pitcher. In other words, we've got to use DH. I think that sucks, but they didn't ask me. And if they came to me and said, well, Eric, it, it, would you rather have a full season or do you want to hold out for your uh, rules as they are? I'd say, give me the DH. You know, I don't want to hold the show up. Um, teams, the National League is going to have to get busy fast. Uh, in free agency to come up with these DH kind of players. Uh, they just don't have that guy just sitting on the bench that can't run, can't field. Everybody on the National League team has to play the field. So they don't have that useless guy that all he can do is hit. Uh, so they're going to have to go find, every National League team is going to have to go find some 
uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they go look at guys that are retired just to go find some guy. It's like, can you still hit? Uh, you can't run, you can't catch, uh, but you can still hit. I mean, David Ortiz apparently is available. He was making sure that he uh, interjected himself into these negotiations. Um, is he a member of the Players Association? I think Subscriber X is telling me he is. How does it sound right? I don't know. Maybe he is. I don't know. But he was definitely involved in these negotiations. Um, I guess we could try to, Phillies maybe could go get him. He seems like uh, he'd be the perfect player. Guy can't run, can't hit, or he can't run, can't throw, can't catch. Uh, perfect. You know, uh, we need a DH. So it'll be trouble for the National League. They're going to have to. Uh, get these guys. They're going to be probably at a disadvantage every time they play the American League. It really, they, they always have been you know, uh, in the American League stadiums. Now they're going to be at disadvantage anywhere they play them, at least for a year or two, I would think. Uh, eventually they'll catch up, but for a year or two, I would think they're going to be at a disadvantage everywhere they play the American League. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, the bigger bases, the uh, pitch clock, uh, what were some of the other crazy things? That's all apparently been shoved off into two, 2023. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, I, I'm not against these things. I just think maybe let's 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 just do the changes incrementally. The pitch clock makes me a little nervous, just because. <sighs> Look, I hate the slow play in baseball. Oh yeah, the shift. I hate I hate that rule that they're going to ban the shift. So so that's our solution. We've got a whole generation of players that can't do fundamental things like hit the other way. So we're going to change the rules for them. <laughs> oh man. I uh, wish uh, I wish where I worked uh, they they did things like that for me. Uh, I've, you know, I can't dunk. Oh, all right. Well, uh, 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 let's just lower the rim for you then. We'll bring it down to eight feet. That should make it okay. How's that? Yeah, I can dunk now. You know, at, at eight feet, I can sky and get up and slam that ball. Uh, so thanks. You know, that's kind of how I feel about banning the shift. You know, screw these guys, these one-dimensional players. Uh, why are we helping them? But whatever. And that's next year anyway. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just jer jazzed that we did away with the extra inning nonsense, the 10th inning guy on second, and the seven inning doubleheaders, which I really hated. Uh, 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 that's all done with. We're adding a playoff team this year in 22. The one game of death is now done. No more game of death. I kind of like that game of death. The one game wild card. You know, you get your three division winners and they get a bye. And then uh, you get uh, the two wild cards play that one game of death. And then you move on to the uh, NLDS, the division series. But now we got three wild cards. So. It's the two still, the two best division winners, the two best division winners. So just by winning your division may not be enough to get you out of that first round. That It's a three-game series now. It's not a one-game series. It's a three-game series. Um, that gives you a little better chance to advance if you're a better team. It uh, yeah, you know, smooths out the randomness of a one-game, nine-inning game where anything could happen. Uh, so a three-game series, that gives you a little better chance if you're the better team. But still, that's three games. Is You know, you run into just two hot starters, you can be out. So I think it's still all right. In other words, it's not... It's not the NBA. It's not the NHL. You play all these games, 162 games, and there's distinct value for having the best records. It gets you that buy. It gets you, uh, allows you to set your pitching uh, uh, staff uh, when you finally do meet uh, the winner of that first-round series. 
because you got to figure their pitching staffs are going to be thrown up in the air. Well, meanwhile, you're going to have your staff set just the way you want it, where you're going to maximize the innings of your best pitchers. So there's still a very distinct advantage to winning convincingly your division. So it, it, they shouldn't, we should still be getting a true product. In other words, there's no advantage to just coasting in and winning your division by one game with 91 wins. You need to win as, as many wins as possible so you can guarantee yourself one of them top two spots in your league. So I, I'm, I'm okay with the, you know, the 12 teams. I'm okay with that. Uh, uh, there was talk about seven teams making it per league. Uh, now we're starting to edge towards NHL territory. But um, 12, I think, is okay. We'll, we'll roll with that. I mean, especially since teams like myself, the Phillies, they suck. We have no chance unless we you know, extend the playoffs downwards towards our uh, 81 wins, which is about what we average a year. So uh, it, it's good. It's all good. I, I really don't have a whole lot of problems with any of it. Uh, let's play ball. Let's play some ball. So, yeah, going forward, uh, opening day, Thursday, the 7th of April. I'm um, looking forward to it. I'm anticipating. Uh, I, I At the moment, I don't know why we wouldn't have a schedule kind of like we did last year. You know, I think we could try to start ramping up our activity and pumping out relatively uh, five, six videos a week, uh, just like we were in the summer uh, last summer. Uh, I got to meet with Louie. I got to figure out how we, uh, if he's uh, wanting to participate uh, this year, uh, or or he's uh, had enough of it, or he doesn't like baseball anymore. Don't know. Uh, so we'll figure that one out. All right, let's talk NCAA basketball. Uh, I don't have any picks for you. I have something better. I have something better. You know, I'm not going to just uh, give you a, a fish. I'm going to give you a fishing pole. And you can do your own fishing. How about that? You ever heard that saying? I know you have because I've told it to you. Um, one of the things we look at when we're trying to figure out what teams to bet on, certainly in, in basketball, certainly football, baseball, maybe not so much baseball. Well, yeah, the, even baseball, definitely. I, I'm going to throw that in there. Who's the coach? Who's the manager? That is a critical item. Uh, the players are the players, uh, but the leader of the team, that guy that puts in the lineup, that guy that makes the changes, the guy that changes pitchers, calls for timeout, and changes players at the uh, two-minute mark, that's uh, a critical, critical man as far as whether you win or lose, especially when you're betting. So here's what we're looking for going into the NCAA tournament. I'm going to give you some names here that I look for. These are some of my guys. Uh, it's not a complete list. I don't want to like just give you the whole th uh, thing. Uh, whereas uh, then you have no reason to watch but or watch my uh, channel. But we're going to give you a few names here of guys that I look for, uh, plus and minus, if you will. Uh, let me uh, pull it up here because I'm going by memory and I may forget. All right, here we go. Andy Enfeld. Here, there. There's a picture of Andy Enfeld. Now, he's the head coach at USC. Uh, he came to prominence, oh, I don't know, at least 10 years ago, I'm going to say, when he took Florida Gulf Coast to, was it the round of 16? He, he, he what is that, the Atlantic Sun Conference? Uh, Florida Gulf Coast, and he took them to beat Georgetown. I remember beat the hell out of Georgetown. Uh, and that was back when that, meant something you know everybody beats the hell out of georgetown now but uh then he got the job out at usc which is basically uh 
a black hole for college basketball. And he's actually done some things out there at USC. He's won, uh, I think, at least one Pac-12 title. Uh, he's won some games in the tournament. See, this is kind of what you're looking for. Is You're looking for guys that win that you've never heard of. That's where you can get some value. Uh, if you're just going to play John Calipari and Mike Krzyzewski, there's no value there. Everybody's heard of these guys, and everybody thinks they always win, which they don't. So this is why we're looking for guys like Andy Enfeld. Now here's a captain brutality, Dan Hurley. Dan Hurley from the University of Connecticut. Uh, he's the less famous Hurley, but he's the better coach Hurley. Uh, Bobby Hurley, uh, who I believe is still at Arizona State, not nearly the coach that his brother Dan is. Uh, his players named him uh, Captain Brutality. I'm sure he's a warm and cuddly guy. Not. Uh, but he covers numbers. So we're going to be looking for Captain Brutality in the tournament. Call the pigs. Eric Musselman from the University of Arkansas. Now this guy, a little different uh, trajectory for a career. He was in the NBA. He was one of these uh, knockabout guys in the NBA, and he just kind of, I don't know, just couldn't find the right team, wrong organizations. Next thing you know, he's going into college. He had some success there at the University of Nevada. Now he's at Arkansas, and he is cleaning up in the SEC, a difficult conference. He is having some real success bringing – the University of Arkansas, back to prominence, Eric Musselman. That's a guy we should look for. And then the greatest of them all, the great Jay Wright from Villanova. For me, he's the best coach in the country, without question. Jay Wright. Who wins two championships within three, what was it, two out of three years at Villanova? Nobody does that. Nobody can do that except the great Jay Wright. And he, you can still get value with him because he just, you know, who, where is the NBA talent on Villanova? Believe it or not, it's actually there. He brings in a lot of these guys. They're just not NBA stars. Uh, they're guys that play 15, 20 minutes, but they're scattered all over the NBA. So he has a lot of hidden talent on his team, and he wins. So we love Jay Wright. Now, who would we be looking to fade, if you will? Uh, that's a lot harder because you know, we're in the tournament. So, obviously, to get in the tournament, you got to win. So, a lot of the bad coaches, they're not even anywhere near the tournament. But uh, guys that generally are short when it comes to covering the number, guys that, I don't know, the, the, maybe are expected to win by 10 and win by 8, or what have you. There are a handful of these guys in the tournament. Uh, here's a couple. Uh, from Notre Dame, Mike Bray. Somehow he's in the tournament this year. Generally, this guy never gets near the tournament, but I guess he's just got a, a lucky generational class of talent this year, and uh, he's going to be in. So that's a guy that generally doesn't cover numbers. And then the, the, the last, and certainly not least, the guy we always look to fade, the great Mick Cronin of UCLA. This is a guy that just has the most bizarre record when it comes to against the spread. He, for all his success, all his wins, he doesn't cover numbers like other successful coaches do. All I can think of is because this guy plays such physical low scoring basketball the numbers may be like you know he would be the 10 point favorite example and he wins by six well you didn't cover the spread now it, uh, everything's low scoring this year so i i don't know if this is going to be a classic cronin year because all the sp uh, uh, point spreads and scores this year are down jay billis did a Nice piece in ESPN a few weeks ago about that, where he pointed out that all of a sudden the referees in the game have decided that nothing is a foul. 
they've forgotten how to uh, determine what is a foul. So it's just uh, uh, hockey out there without the skates. Uh, but uh, Cronin, yeah, I mean, he had a big year last year. Yeah, so that definitely would have uh, somewhat disproved our theory, making it all the way to the finals last year. I don't know. This might be a good year to fade him then because you, you, this guy makes the finals again. I'll be very, very surprised. Uh, so that, these are some coaches of what we're looking for, what we're looking to uh, bet against. Some things to think about as we head into uh, tournament time. Uh, one other thought I had about the basketball just watching today, and, and there was a lot of good action today. Uh, let's see, the ACC, I guess Duke, they look like they're uh, pretty much going to avenge that terrible defeat they had in the last home game at Cameron where they got embarrassed by their most hated rival. So perhaps that's a team you might be looking to play. Uh, but uh, let's see, Michigan, they lost to Indiana. That was a knockout game to me. Indiana, I think, punched their ticket. Michigan should be out. It seems like no matter how much Michigan loses, these bracketology experts just keep them in there. 17 wins, 14 losses. How are you in the tournament? I cannot figure that one out. I think at the end of the day, they will be out. It's just too hard to explain. Furthermore, then the committee is going to have to answer a question by somebody at some point. Someone's going to bring it up and say, well, what about Juwan Howard punching that other coach? And you're still putting this questionable team into the tournament? I think the uh, committee doesn't want to answer that question. So... You know, they'll say, well, that had nothing to do with it. We uh, certainly, you know, uh, the disciplinary action taken by the Big Ten was sufficient to chasten and cause contrition on the part of Jawan Howard, who will never do it again. And it really, uh, the, what takes place on the court has nothing to do with disciplinary. Oh, bullshit, it doesn't. So we'll see. But I think Michigan should be out. Baylor losing, that should knock them off the one seed, I would think. Uh, who else was uh, Texas A&M had a nice win at Florida. Uh, that should put them close to being in. Uh, I'm probably forgetting somebody. But one thing, well, Ohio State lost, but that's nothing new. We, we're losing every game now. You know, I... I I hope we play somebody like Oral Roberts so it's not embarrassing when we lose in the first round. Well, it will be embarrassing. I mean, uh, where I'm not upset. In other words, if I lose to North Carolina, I'm going to be upset. I don't want to, if I lose to Oral Roberts, all right, uh, good for Oral Roberts. I don't want to lose to a team I don't like. Uh, what I noted is that the teams that are out of the tournament, they're playing like their hair is on fire. They are beating these in-the-tournament teams, if you will, with regularity, especially in the second half. So maybe that's something to look at tomorrow uh, if you see this video before tip-off at noon. It, it sort of makes sense, especially, uh, more so than normal. In other words, well, the, the line should compensate for that uh, whereas a team that should be a 10 point favorite it's only a six point favorite because the favorite no doesn't have anything to play for everyone knows that they're already in whereas the other team the 500 team they're going to play to the death because they need to win and advance to get in <sighs> yeah but there still might be value on that 500 team uh, and the reason is that they're all seniors this year. They're all fifth-year seniors because of this pandemic. Everybody got to come back one more time. And uh, so many of these teams were behind uh, in these games today, and they just wore out the team ahead of them, just wore them out in the second half. So if you really want to be creative, you might play these underdogs uh, in the second half and really catch some value there. 
Because, I don't know, if I'm a fifth-year senior and I've played basketball, I'm 22, 23 years old, and I've been playing basketball pretty much for 10 years competitively, and I know, I'm looking at that clock, and it says there's 12 minutes left in the game. i got 12 minutes left in my career. I, I, I'm not probably not good enough to go play in Europe. You know, we're talking, this is at the highest level of basketball, and after I'm, these 12 minutes expire, I'm going to the Y. I'm going to go play basketball with guys like Eric Arnold at the uh, YMCA. That's not very exciting. I want to keep playing major college basketball. I'm going to play my guts out for these last 12 minutes. So, yeah, I think that could be a really powerful driver of these teams that, like Butler, uh, who else won? Uh, Syracuse won a game. Uh, who else is uh, Oklahoma? Uh, trying to think of some other teams. Uh, Penn State that are really giving the higher seeded teams trouble. Teams that are Penn State, you know, they have to win the tournament to get advance or to go to the big dance. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's something Butler, same way. Uh, so, yeah, I think Butler lost. I, I, I'm trying to remember what the result of that game was. Can't remember. At any rate, good stuff. Happy that the uh, MLB and the Players Association made a deal. Hooray for them. Thank God. But now it's all systems go. It's like, wow, this is great. I, I, it, man, it's been three years, four years. I guess three years since you know we're, we've come into a season here and it's going to be a normal season. Unbelievable. I, I'm just so excited. All right, good, great, thanks. Hey, we're going to have more sports episodes now because we actually have something to handicap. woo Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do either, do both, do anything. We'll see you later.